So welcome back. We have been looking at conceptual dependency and we have seen that this is a kind of a semantic base in terms of which we can map natural language sentences and create representations which are canonical in the nature that they are language independent. We choose a set of actions, so M trans, P trans, move, propel and whatever and try to represent everything in terms of that. So, let us look at a few sentences and how we would represent them. So, here is this sentence, John was sad because Mary hit him. So, we want to be able to say that Mary hitting John resulted in John going into the state of becoming sad essentially. So, an act causing a state change. The act is that Mary hit John. The state change which results out of that act is that John became sad. Of course, hit is not a CD act. We have introduced the CD acts by now. It would be modeled as coming into a state of being in forceful contact with propel being the basic act and move the instrument of the act. We do not know what Mary hit John with, uh, but something was propelled against John. Events can cause other events to happen, we have said. When Fred gave Mary a peach, she ate it. So, the first event is Fred tranced a peach. So, ideally it should be either A trans or P trans, more likely A trans that gave position to Mary. As a result of which Mary ate the peach and all this is happening in the past tense. So, a lot of words in English language which are verbs are not actions conceptually. So, here is a gruesome example, John killed his teacher. So, in English killed is a verb, but it is not an action conceptually because we cannot visualize what John is doing. John could have done a hundred different things uh, which resulted in the death of his teacher including not submissions is submitting his assignments on time, but there could be many other ways of doing this. So, such verbs in language which are verbs which means they tend to invoke a sense of being actions are not really actions, but they are causal relations between doing things and some state change happening. So, these are called state change verbs essentially. So, the main thing that is happening is that the teacher, we have modeled it as saying possessed by John in the past tense went from the state of being alive to the state of being dead. And this happened because John did something. So, this is an accurate representation of the sentence John killed his teacher because we do not know what he did. He did something but as a result of which there was a state change event which happened. So, the linguistic verbs often focus on the state change while ignoring the action part of it essentially. So, conceptually verb is not a action and conceptually killed is not an action. So, it could be that John killed his teacher by shooting him in the head. So, the second part is the same the teacher was killed, but the action has changed, it is more specific now. He propelled uh, bullets from the gun to the head possessed by the teacher. So, you can see that this is how you would imagine things to be happening in, in countries where you know people go around shooting their teachers. So, when you say Sam flew his plane to San Francisco. So, then 
first of all we have to translate his into the fact that it is a plane which is possessed by Sam as shown in this red circle here. But otherwise it is a state change verb essentially. Sam did something which is shown on the top as a result of which the plane flew from somewhere we do not know where to San Francisco in the direction of San Francisco. Fly itself would be modeled as P trans in the air or something like that. John comforted Mary. Again, John did something we do not know what, where Mary went into a state of being comfortable. So, it is a mental state. Here is a slightly more complex sentence. Since smoking can kill you, I stopped. So, there is two things here happening here. One is a causal connection between smoking and you possibly dying from that. And then this act of stopping smoking because of this causal relation between smoking and possible death. So, this is the first part where you can see that if one ingests smoke from the cigarette to oneself. So, again you can see these are you know very somewhat ad hoc ways of representing things. So, if one, so this is a conditional relation between the two actions. If, if all this is in the past, smoking can kill you. If you ingest smoke, then you can go. So, this can stands for possible can go from the state of being alive to the dead. This whole thing was the cause of this new conceptualization which is there on the right hand side, which says that the conceptualization itself says that I ingest smoke from the cigarette to me, but the labels for the act says that I terminated this action sometime in the past. So, I stopped smoking. Why did I stop smoking? Because of this connection between smoking and death. So, while going home, I saw a frog. So, one conceptualization can mark the time for another one essentially. So, in so one thing is that I am going home and at that time, I saw the frog. So, we have seen there are various labels uh, that we had used, uh, 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 which uh, talk about when the event happening, because we are talking about time. So, whenever we talk about action, we have to talk about time and change and so on. So, these are the various uh, labels we can use. So, with this past, then future, then transition, then transition start, then transition finished, continuing interrogative, when did it happen, negative, it did not happen, C is for potential. So, since smoking can kill you, we said, nil is just present term and delta means timeless essentially. So, you can model uh, different tenses. So, here is an example. Uh, yesterday, the boy in the chair hit the boy on the piano in the mouth, in the park. So, there are a lot of the's here as you can see, which basically are talking about specific uh, things. So, the chair is specific, the park is specific and the piano is specific uh, and so on. So, the boy in the chair is marked by saying the location of that boy is this, that chair. The object of hit was the mouth and the mouth was possessed by the second boy whose location was near the piano. And this whole thing happened yesterday, though ideally we would replace it with a fixed time. 
and this location of this entire event was the park essentially. You can see that in the spirit of logic, our representations are unambiguous and complete essentially. Complete in the sense that everything that we can we are saying in the sentence is there. So, very often it is not clear whether we are talking about actions or states. So, when you say I like books, it is it is like saying that books please me essentially. What do you really mean essentially? One thing that you could mean is that I do something with books which results in me being happy or pleased or whatever. Then you can talk about different kinds of thinking actions. So, prevent would be modeled as x doing something as a result of which y not being able to do something, whatever that is. So, if you were to create a dictionary of English language to conceptual dependency, then these are the kind of structures that you would store on the retrieval side. That prevent, whenever you see the word preempt, prevent, you would replace, you would retrieve this entire structure. In addition, as we will see later, we may have semantic constraints on what can x be, what can y be. For example, they must be sentient uh, creatures or things like that, whatever it is. Uh, so, you imagine that you create such a dictionary of words and then as you read sentences, you retrieve those structures and try to match them and fill, fill up the empty slots and so on. We will see a couple of examples. So, instigate would be similar except that the label is that you are doing it intentionally. So, x does something which intentionally he does that as a result of which y does something. Hurt we have already seen that when Mary hit John he was hurt. Comfort also we have seen that x does something then y goes into a state of being comfortable which is a mental state. So, you can say I comforted John that I did something in the past as of which in the transient state he became comfortable. A more probabilistic analysis would be that I said some things, what was this said? They were some soothing words maybe towards John and I had kind of gently tapped him or something or patted him. As a result of which he went from a state of being upset to a state of being comfortable. So, here is something even more specific. If you say I comforted John by feeding him, then what you are doing is you can see at the topmost level that I a tranced, so I should say a here, food towards John as a result of which John ingested the food, as a result of which he went from a state of being upset to a state of being comfortable. So, giving food leads to eating food leads to becoming comfortable. So, here is a representation of the word threaten. So, if you wanted to create this dictionary, this is what you would need to put it put into your dictionary essentially. What does threaten say? Threaten says and we have used some non CD words here, but that is a general idea that if x is threatening y, then x communicates. So, this is m trans essentially something which is a conceptualization in itself. As a result of which y 
comes to believe this whole thing. What is this whole thing saying? That if conditionally in the future y were to do something, then so this is like then x would do something as a result of which y would be in a state of being hurt. So, this is our general understanding of the word threaten that you tell someone that if you do this, then you will get hurt. We are not specifying how or what will happen or something like that. If you are more subtle, then you might simply say if you do something, you will regret it later, assuming that if you are getting hurt, you will regret it essentially. So, we will stop here for a break and come back and look at a couple of examples of threaten and other words in this language.